sparkle any good on suits? That's a question I've had for a really long time because when I remember seeing her initial scene in this series and I remember being just so incredibly turned off by her character. Now, obviously a lot of that could be attributed to the writing of that scene and I'll explain to you why I didn't like that. But what I thought would be really interesting is because obviously Netflix has put suits on. It was actually in the number one spot for a little while, but that's not saying much because it is summer and nothing's new com is really coming out except for The Witcher, which is already downgraded for reasons that we won't go into here. But I thought it would be fun to actually watch Suits for the first time and film my reaction to it because I've never really watched it and I've seen clips of it from various things and because I was looking up for clips of Suits to use in videos, it happens to be coming up more on my YouTube feed. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna film a reaction to it. I've never done anything like this before to really be able to judge Meghan Markle's acting in character because I've seen bits and pieces and I've always thought, I don't know much about the series, but her acting is really rather cringe. So I'm just curious if that's really the whole effect or if there's more going on behind the scenes. So we're gonna check this out today and I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion about what I think of her in this initial series and really perhaps we'll do more of these going forwards because I'm honestly looking for a new series to dig into. And again, I just thought my, might as well judge Suits and Meghan Markle in it. So we are going to do that today. But if you guys haven't been here, this is Royal News Network. I provide compelling royal commentary. So I'd love to have you guys back if that's something that's of interest to you. I also have a weekly newsletter, Royal Wire, a fashion channel where I may go into the fashion of suits and how Meghan Markle dressed on suits was better than she was as a royal by far. So go ahead and check out all the links are down below. And so without further ado, let's dig in to suits. And if you're just curious right now, it's the number five spot on Netflix. Let's go into it. Pilot part one and part two, an hour and 21 minutes. Oh, this video won't be that long, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm just bored. <laughs> Oh, I did see that. What language is this in? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What language is this in? It's in Spanish. Why is it in Spanish? Oh my gosh, guys. No, okay. <laughs> I don't know why it was in Spanish. I'm like all waiting. There's this really long intro, no dialogue, and all of a sudden they're speaking in Espanol. Okay, that was hysterical. All right, let's go back. Okay, let's... All right. This is Harvey Specter. He's our best closer. Well, if you're the best closer, where the hell you been for the last three hours? Well, Gerald, I specialize in troubled situations, and when I left here... Okay, so the main, or one of the main lawyer guys, Harvey, is a closer. He's a specialist. That's what I got. 7 p.m. This deal wasn't in jeopardy, so I'm just trying to figure out what happened in the interim. We keep offering more money, they keep rejecting it. It's last-minute bad faith. It says here that Cooper won't be staying on as honorary vice president. And just FYI for people, there is a little bit of language in, in this show that more than you would get on your average broadcast network, which is weird. I don't get quite why, because there wasn't really any language in Psych, which I loved and was also on USA Today, but USA Network, not USA Today. <clears throat> we got paid before Gerald signed the deal. What are you talking about? This is a memo about some fire drill on Tuesday. Huh. You're the blue team captain. You get to wear a fire hat. <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> That's clever. Okay, in the scene with the guy who's supposedly the fraud, because the bare bones I know about this, it says on the chalkboard, law school exam entrance, or en law school entrance exam. They wouldn't put that on the blackboard when you're taking a test. I'm pretty sure I've been to, I've taken the LSAT, I've taken the GRE. I don't think anybody ever put on there, you're taking the graduate record examination or you're taking the law school exam. I don't think they really put that. But again, it's a television show. But anyways, I just thought I'd put that out there. You're not just a girl.
there's drug use in this too? It looks like he's, I don't know what he's doing. It looks like some sort of bong. Really? Oh, come on, people. Uh, I just saw Meghan Markle's name flash up on the screen. I hadn't been paying attention to the rest of the names, but we are officially, we are officially seven minutes in and that's the first time we see her name on the screen. Just saying. Dude. Although it looks like she is above Sarah Rafferty, who is another actor within the show who I think is slightly better. She's a redhead. So that is interesting to note because usually actors names that determines their billing and that's a pretty significant aspect of you want to you want to be higher on the list or you want to be and or with those usually exemplify people who, even though they're last they're also high up in billing i have clients who bring me briefcases filled with cash and i hand them identical briefcases with vacuum sealed bud i'm telling you man hide in plain sight okay so what do you need me for well i have a client coming in from out of town and i can't meet him and i need someone i can trust make the drop it's totally safe okay so now we're into drug dealing this is fun i was not expecting this with this show really wasn't evening Cheers. well you two seem to be celebrating something uh -huh. we are in fact you are looking at the best closer this city has ever seen closer huh baseball attorney i close situations mm, so you only care about money truth is i do it for the children <laughs> Okay, it's weird. This whole scene in a bar with like the head attorney lady and Harvey seems like it was all done in ADR. You can, you just get that fake audio feel from it that it's not exactly as natural as it would be if they caught it on like on location while they were filming. Just an interesting, just an interesting thing I picked up and so far not very impressed with the show overall. <laughs> I hate to say it. I know some people love suits. If you love suits, you love suits. But so far I'm, I'm struggling here. <laughs> I'm Lisa. Harvey. Hi. Lisa, I don't normally do this, but of course since he we does. are celebrating, <laughs> what time do you get off tonight? Glad you asked. I get off at ten past. I'm never going out with you. <laughs> I guess uh, you're not the best closer this city's ever seen. I'm still bored. Harvey has a gorgeous view of Manhattan skyline. It really is quite, they got in a really impressive place. I don't know where they filmed, but it looks gorgeous. Good morning. Lisa, this was lovely, but I'm afraid it's time to go. Oh, can't we hang out? I can make you breakfast. I hate to miss a workout and I... Okay, this is so lame. He brings the girl from the bar home who initially said she would never go out with him. I'm pretty sure it's the same person. And then he's fully dressed. She's still in bed and he's like, I gotta work out or something. She's like, oh, let's stay and chill. I'm like, well, he's clearly dressed and ready to go to work. I mean, come on. You really need to be in the office by 7.30. Mm, that's too bad. Cause I was kind of thinking maybe. And it also still really, really sounds like ADR. You could eat it off my stomach. I guess if I- So cringe. <laughs> So cringe. You can eat breakfast off my stomach. <laughs> so cringe. Skip the gym, I can still get in by nine. <laughs> it's so, like, so ADR. It just sounds so much like ADR. I hear someone's not taking their pills. Because they're trying to poison me. Right. So apparently Mike is doing at least some of his back dealing to help with his grandmother who is in a, looks like some sort of care home facility. Jessica, I could have handled Gerald Tate. And I told you I disagree. Why? Because, because when you put two bullies in the same room together, things generally don't go so well. It's 9.30, nice of you to show up two hours after we open for business. And I see that you're also trying to look like a pimp. My bad, Lewis. I was out late last night. And when I woke up, this is the suit your wife picked out for me. <laughs> and that would be funny if I'd actually be married. Moving <laughs> along. I'm an exception. Find me another one. Can we please skip the recruiting? I work better alone anyway. Well, I would, Harvey, except all senior partners get an associate. It's just a rule. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> 
Jessica, I deserve that promotion. All right, now you two make nice. Lewis, I apologize. I was out of line. Now, if you'll just let me text your pretend wife that I just made senior partner. <laughs> what? Too far? Oh, yeah, so Harvey's a bit of not a nice guy. Just, just saying that. Come on, she doesn't even exist. How was that nice? It's not mean. Lewis, come on. Lewis, just messing around <laughs> with you. I need to move to full care or I'll have to transfer her to the state facility. I won't put her in the state facility. Then I'm afraid you'll have to come up with 25000 <sighs> then I will. So now we have the conflict. Mike, who's the character Meghan Markle's character falls in love with, needs to get to $25,000 to make sure that his grandmother is not removed from whatever care facility she's in into a stay home because now she needs more full-time care. So now because of that $25,000 need, obviously we have set up that he's going to now take the marijuana deal. Jack. Donna, clear my schedule tomorrow. You and I are hiring a new associate. Done. Tell me, does this suit make you look like a pimp? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Key. 24 hours, we'll know if this new buyer is a cop. Ooh. Why don't you tell Trevor he might be sending his guy into a setup? Oh, so interesting. So, as it turns out, the drop might be a setup with a cop. The drug dealers aren't sure about that. Yeah. I gotta go. So apparently, the drug dealer's girlfriend, he, Mike, might be soft on her, or at least they were long. They've been friends for a long time. I'm not sure. We're gonna need to streamline this. Give each guy a hard time before you send them back. Give me a wink if they say something clever. Cool. Okay. What are you looking for? Another me. <laughs> Got it. Arrogant, self-absorbed, blowhard. Thinks he's the smartest one in the room. That's why I love you. You get me. Yeah, but how good do I look? Victor Gerber is in this. So he was an alias. So, oh, this is a bit of a surprise. He's well known for being like really good friends with Jennifer Garner. So, and he also played the shipbuilder in Titanic. See, I was afraid you were gonna say that. My gut tells me it's Harvey. My heart says he's not ready. What's the problem? He's the problem. <laughs> if the leader of a firm doesn't care about the people who work for him, there's not gonna be much of a firm left to lead. The man's missing compassion. Hmm? It's shoved down his throat. <laughs> Smoke salmon. So, Chef, what makes you think that I'm going to let the whitest man that I have ever seen interview? <laughs> uh, because I have an appointment. I like the Harvey Donna dynamic. I like that dynamic. Kid, what is wrong with you? You look like you're 11 years old. I was late to puberty. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I respect you. <laughs> Come on. Uh, excuse me. I was thinking about going for a swim. Are the pool facilities here nice? Of course, sir. It's the Chilton Hotel. So Mike walks by the room, or close to the room, realized there were a couple of cops. He kind of deduced that these people who were pretending to be hospital employees were cops. And so instead of going to the room where he was going to make the, the drop, he ends up running down the stairs. And he remembers, because they show you in a flashback, that they have the Harvard interview. So he's going to go downstairs. The chase is on! Rick Sorkin! <coughs> Rick Sorkin? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Sorkin, you are five minutes late. Is there a reason why I should let you in? Look, look, I, look I'm just trying to ditch the cops, okay? I, I don't really care if you let me in or not. <laughs> Hi, uh, Rick Sorkin. Harvey Specter, nice to meet you. Should I have a seat here? Oops. The briefcase falls open and there's marijuana. 
Bernie can do. Pick a topic. Stock option backdating. Although backdating options is legal, violations arise related to disclosures under IRC section 409A. You forgot about Sarbanes-Oxley. The statute of limitations renders Sarbanes-Oxley moot post-2007. Well, not if you can find actions to cover up the violation as established in the Sixth Circuit May 2008. Okay, maybe this is a nitpicking thing with the show, and I get it, but this idea that you can only hire from Harvard Law, because Harvard Law is the only place that decent lawyers come from, is wrong. I'm sure there's bad lawyers in Harvard, just like there are good lawyers at lower ranking law schools. That's just, I think, the hubris of thinking, well, that's the only law school you can ever go to. That's the only law school that can teach you everything you need to know about X, Y, and Z. I think it's a little, it's a little much. I, I sort of get it. Law school people are like, well, I went to Yale. I went to Princeton. I went to Harvard. Those, those are big names. But I don't think ever the school is necessarily a reflection of your intelligence nor your ability to do certain things. It's impressive, but you're sitting at a computer. Playing hearts. <laughs> Sorry, if you want to beat me, you're gonna have to do it at something else. Why take the bar? This bet me I couldn't pass it without going to law school. <laughs> I do like that. I'll make sure that Serpico isn't around waiting for you. I needed some money, and Trevor convinced me to memorize this math test and sell it. Turns out we sold it to the dean's daughter. I lost my scholarship, I got kicked out of school. I, okay, so I have a little bit of sympathy for him. I got knocked into a different life. Okay, I do appreciate that. So apparently Mike's character, he memorized the math test, sold it, sold it to the, the dean's daughter, and it was because of his friend Trevor, who's the drug dealer guy. So as it turns out, then he got kicked out of school and kind of his life got set back, which can happen to people. But that also says, don't cheat. I'm inclined to give you a shot, but what if I decide to go another way? I say that's fair. And sometimes I like to hang out with people who aren't that bright. Oh. See how the other half lives. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm emailing the firm. I just found our next associate. How do I sign up for today's law school tour? You go back in time six weeks because that's <laughs> when it booked up. All these and here comes Megan. So we are officially 30 minutes into the episode before we actually see her. And this is the scene that drives me up a wall. Mike Ross? Hi. I'm Rachel Zane. I'll be giving your orientation. Wow, you're pretty. Good. You hit on me. We can get it out of the way that I'm not interested. No. So, all he says, and it is unprofessional on his part, is when he first is introduced to her, and he goes, wow, you're pretty. And she goes, well, now that we can get that out of the way. And she just gets exceedingly snarky on him. And she's like, you were hitting on me. Which he, he kind of was, but he was also just shocked and genuinely surprised because he was not expecting her. And what's weird too is that he goes to the front desk and he doesn't even say his name or why he's there. And she comes in introducing herself. So I feel like there is a, there's a little bit of a disconnect in terms of how in the world does she know that that's who that is and that that's who she needs to meet and show around. And so, uh, sorry, I, I wasn't hitting on you. Trust me. I've given dozens of these and without fail, whatever new hot shot it is, thinks that because I'm just a paralegal that I will somehow be blown away by his dazzling degree. So she is apparently she is God's gift to men because every hot shot, quote unquote, that comes into this law office is enamored with Rachel Zane. Megan's pretty, but she's not Angelina Jolie. She's not Megan Fox. So I just find that incredibly hard to believe. And I just find this introduction of her character incredibly cringy. I think they were trying to come across like she's this powerful woman who is just uninhibited and just unimpressed by somebody like the lawyers that she interacts with. But to me, she comes across as obnoxious, arrogant, entitled, all these sorts of things. And that I'm sorry, but I don't think every hotshot that walks into her office is hitting on her. If that is, then they have an incredibly unprofessional work 
environment, especially if that's the first interaction you have with her. I'm gonna assure you, I won't. I was. Mm -hmm. I was hitting on you. You were. Take notes, I'm not gonna repeat myself. I love you. Okay, after his first interaction, he looks at her, he, goes, he, he follows her with his eyes after she leaves, he goes, I love you. And I'm like, why? Why? She just basically told you that she is the human being that every man on earth is attracted to. No other man. I just don't, I, I don't get the attraction there at all. So on our left, mergers and acquisitions. On the opposite side, high net worth divorce. Nice. <laughs> mergers across from divorce. Symmetry. <laughs> So he actually makes a clever thing about symmetry between having divorced and merger in the same section of the office. As she stops, she's like, shakes her head like, no. And I was like, it's clever. It's clever. I'd be like, yeah, go you, man. I should just listen. The firm up. And he goes, I should just listen. And I know, again, this is how her character is written, but it's obnoxious. It's really obnoxious. Operates on a chain of command model. Harvey's your commanding officer. However, Lewis Litt, he oversees all associates, so you'll also answer to him. What do you think about Harvey? People are in awe of him. They say he's the best closer there is, but I have very little contact with him, so I don't know. What about Lewis Litt? Let's continue with your tour. Okay, so she's just, you, you almost get the sense with Meghan Markle's acting that, again, she's overacting. You almost see the actingness that she is, she's reacting, like thinking like, well, I'm an actress and I must react this way. There's just very little, I feel like, natural about the way she reacts to things. Just an interesting thought. Excuse me, why are you scratching off the senior off my door? I got a work order to take it off. Who issued the work order? My supervisor. Why did he issue the work order? I knew that I'd be his supervisor. <laughs> you seem to be enjoying yourself. I have enjoyed myself since 2004. Donna? Someone's trying to have a little fun with me here. And finally, this is where you'll live. <laughs> wow. I gave you that for a reason you haven't taken one note. It's because... Because you were too busy ogling me to listen to a word I've said. So... <laughs> Megan's character, Rachel, which is actually Megan's legal name, said, like gives him a hard time because he didn't write anything down. She's like, well, you were too busy ogling me, weren't you? And it's like, I hate those kind of women because maybe he could do two things at once. That is actually possible. And he, he does prove this in a later scene, but I just find like that going... Well, you were too busy ogling me, of course. Of course you didn't listen to a word I said. Well, it's like, well, honey, if you hate that job that much, go and get a different job. So I understand where I think they're trying to go with this character, but I just find it so unbelievable that I just don't like it. And honestly, I find a lot of the characterizations in this show a bit ridiculous so far, but hers in particular, I find just incredibly grating. Partner's office is anchor the wings. Fifth floor is research. Six is security. All work gets billed, even if it's finding an address. I answer to Harvey and Lewis Litt, and judging by the way you responded to my questions, I should admire Harvey and I should fear Lewis. You have been here for five years, and just because I outrank you does not mean I have the authority to command your services. <laughs> oh, it's also pretty clear that you think you're too smart to be a paralegal. You know what nobody likes? Nobody likes to show off. Okay, she, she responds to him after he explains and tells her not only everything that she said, but also her reactions tell him that she thinks she's too smart to be a paralegal. She goes, well, nobody likes to show off. I was like, well, you were kind of showing off by telling him that you are the hottest woman in all of creation, basically. <laughs> Again, I think from what I was seeing on, on YouTube in shorts and stuff, there's other instances where her character is kind of like this. But again, I don't think this is particularly good writing for her character. You use the word ogling. <laughs> when do I get to see Harvey? All right, hold on. Mike. Hey, who's ready for a great first day? I'm gonna have to let you go. What? I just got reamed for lying to a client, and if they find out that I lied about you going to Harvard, they'll take away my license. You what? Not now, Donna. <laughs> I'm worried that if I stay, then they might find out that you lied about me and you'll lose your license. But if you fire me, then I could tell them that you lied about me and no. you lose your license. <laughs> You're rehired. <laughs> That's clever. So should I... All right. Uh 
<laughs> and why not? Because you were obligated to notify them the second I lied to Gerald, but you didn't. You put me in front of the board right now, I'll put you right up there with me. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your first case. Awesome. What is it? Pro bono. Sexual harassment. Don't tell anyone I laid it off on you and don't screw it up. So I do kind of love this trick of the camera angle is that she throws the file to Harvey and they cut and the file lands in Mike's lap. So it was just a clever, that was just a clever cut thing. Got it. You can't handle it? Ooh. Get out of the park. Easy Claire's time. Let's just go meet the client. Hey. Can I tell you to get some better suits? I spent five hundred dollars. For how many suits? What? Five. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. What are you doing? Don't touch that. Just checking my lock. You ride your bike. To... It's locked. Okay. <laughs> I like to check my locks too, Mike. Mike. Oh, Megan's back again. I will say, I think this, the, you know, this two-parter pilot is an hour and a half. I really think they could have condensed it to an hour. I think they could have lost at least 20 minutes. It feels like it drags, it really does. You're a rookie associate. If you go home before nine on your first week, you're not gonna make it through your first month. Uh, and Lewis Litt wants to see you. Hey, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. This tie, is it too skinny? Yeah. And being a lawyer sounds a little bit terrible. At least in a high pressure firm, it's like your first week you can't go home till nine. <laughs> like, whew, that would be hard. I need a drink. I need your help. There's a hearing on my subpoena. I've got three cases in front of you, so you're gonna have to wait in line. So we're now back. Megan is back. I don't like this outfit, I think, as much as the first one. No, 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 no. My hearing is tomorrow. So why are you coming to me? Because Donna says you're the best researcher in the firm. Hmm. Let me see the motion. So Mike is going to Rachel to help him with the subpoena because she is a quote unquote the best researcher in the firm. She is a paralegal. So apparently she is the best according to Donna. So Rachel gets help. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have an office? How do you have an office and I have a cubicle? Like you said, I'm the best researcher in the firm. Really? Well, I just made that up. I didn't even have time to talk to Donna. <laughs> is this all a joke to you? Because I take my job seriously. No, I'm, I'm, I'm... Again, you just feel like her character has this massive annoying chip on their shoulders. So he admits that he basically made up that she was the best researcher in the firm, that he hadn't talked to Donna. He was very impressed with her office. And what does she say to him? Because I'm like, girl. No, I just made that up. I didn't even have time to talk to Donna. Is this all a joke to you? Because I take my job seriously. She asked him if this is a joke because, you know, she takes her job so seriously. It's like, he was just impressed. He was just, like, d making a Hail Mary. And he, he he's impressed by you. And you have to snipe back at him. And I know, again, she's playing a character. But according to Tom Bauer in his book, Meghan Markle very much, like, adopted the persona to a certain extent of Rachel Zane. She, she sort of wanted to become Rachel Zane or have Rachel Zane become her. So I really think Meghan can't act very well and so her best characters are the ones where she's literally playing herself and so if we see this you could say and this is just my opinion if you see this as a reflection of who megan is she comes across as very very obnoxious entitled sort of like she that she can't take a joke and that she like i don't understand his interest in her because He's genuinely very impressed by her, like he's impressed with her office, honey. He's impressed with you. And she just snipes back at him. Well, you think this is a joke? I take my job very seriously. That's not what he's saying. He was just thinking on his feet. He wasn't sure and he was like, you know what? I, I will just say to you, hey, let's see if you can do this for me. And she just basically throws it back in his face. I care about this woman. She's got nowhere else to turn. And, and you can't help her by yourself. And again, 
how she plays it is just very condescending. Like, even the way she looks, she's like, because he's trying to say, well, I care about this woman I'm helping on this pro bono case. I want to do a good job. And she's like, you can't do it by yourself. Is that what you said? Oh. I'll take privacy. I'll take harassment law. This will take a while. We're going to need dinner. So now they are doing research together. They're going to order dinner and you get, she's going to take the pri privacy law. He's going to take the harassment law. And somehow they're going to come up with an argument that they can present to the lawyers of the, the firm that they're trying to sue or the, the company that they're trying to sue on behalf of this woman who's charging. Why? Aren't I a lawyer? Mm. I don't test well. What? I am smart. And I know I'd be a good lawyer. I just, I don't know what it is. So she's admitting Rachel Zane's character that she wants to be a lawyer, but she doesn't test well. And I actually do empathize with that because I actually don't test well. I, I feel like I'm fairly smart, but I took the GRE once. I got in the, like the 20th percentile of the GRE, which is very low on the verbal and the mathematics. But in the writing, I got like in the 92nd percentile or 91st or 90th or something. So it's one of those things where I just don't test well. I can write very well, very persuasively, but when it comes to like multiple choice math, I hate it. I'm terrible at it. So this I do understand because I, I did take the LSAT. I don't think I did particularly well. I understand that test taking is a way to evaluate candidates, but it doesn't tell you what, to a certain extent, I think how well they think because it, it tells you how well they take a test but doesn't tell you oftentimes always how well they think because I think the best people or the people who come up with the most unique ideas are those that can think outside the box and I don't think those people do particularly well in tests. That could be just, that's just my personal opinion on the matter. But you're gonna also tell that they're setting up because I saw clips of this later that obviously he can take tests for people. That's what he charged people to do. So you almost feel the setup here where, hey, I can take, the, even though he can't, <laughs> almost arguing that he could take the test for her. Is. I can't take tests, and I bomb the LSATs. <laughs> and even if I could get into a law school, there's just no way I'd pass the bar, so... If only there was someone who could take the test for me. <laughs> yeah, if only there were. <laughs> yeah. Yielded any fruit. You honestly think I would harass Herman? <laughs> I don't know, Your Honor. Some people have a thing for the uniform. <laughs> I'd like to think Herman would come to me before it even got to an investigation. I saw that. Herman, I'd like to speak to you in chambers. That was awesome. Oh, we had the bailiff and the judge. That's so fun. That is funny. That's, that's the best part. That's the best part of the whole thing so far. We won. It's fantastic. So now we have a week to corroborate Nancy's story. Listen, I couldn't have done it without you. You wouldn't even know where to look without me. You know what nobody likes? Mm. Nobody likes a show off. They're trying to bury you in paperwork. Well, they picked the wrong guy. Stay it's interesting for pilots, you can always tell that things aren't quite up to snuff because I don't really think makeup, Megan's makeup here is flattering and that's not on her, that's on the, the makeup designer. I just don't think... Maybe it's just because the look is so kind of dated, but I don't feel like, especially the lipstick is particularly flattering on her. Now shall we play? I'm at my standing I'm desk, my legs are tired. I know where they don't want us to look. Just from a legal perspective, I don't think it makes sense to go to the woman who is responsible for bringing the harassment lawsuit and tell her about another woman who was supposedly harassed, asking her information about it. I feel like that's, that would damage your investigation because you would want to make sure you find this woman first instead of going to somebody else. I can't do it. Ugh, so long. Okay, this... Again, I feel like this series is way longer than it needs to be. It really is. No, that's not it. You're making it seem different than it is. I'm sorry. You, you were arrested in your past and you lied about it here under oath. Is that making it seem different than what it is? Oh my gosh, I want this to end. This is going on forever. Oh my gosh, I'm so bored. <sighs> All right guys, so final thoughts here real quick. Number one, that is a long episode. It was much longer than it needed to be. I will say for, I think they could have done that in 45 minutes. Now it was interesting to set up his friend and the circumstances that led to him getting hired at the firm and the whole harassment case. I mean, there were aspects of that that were interesting, but for an hour and 20 minutes, you felt 
every single minute of that. <laughs> It dragged, they did montages like a bit too long. You could just feel it like they were dragging things out unnecessarily to fill that time. And so I don't feel like when I was watching that, that I enjoyed that time so much. I got bored. I was like, oh my gosh, is this gonna be over yet? And that's not just like talking about Megan. That was just talking about the show in general. Perhaps it gets better. Obviously first episodes are not always the best. Although I will say they're first episodes that really captivate me and I'm like, okay, I'm in. This show isn't one of them, maybe it gets better. <laughs> but when it comes to Meghan Markle in this show, I mean, she's not, you don't see her that much in it, so that's part of it, but you just really feel the acting. You feel her definition of acting in this series. And because it feels so strong, it doesn't feel very natural. It feels rather forced. And so I would say, Compared to the rest of the cast, she's she's maybe a bit of the weaker link, but honestly, it's hard to tell this first episode, but I will say the introduction of her character, if I met that character in real life, I would not like that person <laughs> because I don't think anybody should go around going, well, everybody just wants to flirt with me because I'm gorgeous. <laughs> How dare anybody not want to flirt with me because I'm perfect and gorgeous. I don't like that. If I was an actress and got that role, I'd be like, can, can we soften that a smidge? Because that seems really, really conceited. And it does, and you feel it. And so in a lot of ways, I'm just not a huge fan of that. I'm not a huge fan of the way that they chose to portray the character. I wonder if they change that going forward. But she does come across as very into herself, very self-obsessed. You could almost say a little narcissistic because she's like going on about how beautiful she is and how every guy in the world wants to hit on her. Now that could come from you know, experience, but in a professional setting, that should not be generally what happens. Again, he broached the unprofessional line by going, wow, you're, you're beautiful. And she reciprocated and obviously got mad about that. That was on him, but at the same time, it just felt like, so does every guy walk in and go, wow, you're so gorgeous, you're amazing. I doubt that, I just really do. People who are real professionals shouldn't do that, but maybe, Maybe I live in a different world than most people, but it's not, I, I don't feel like that is a professional in a work environment, especially in first meeting. So guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Suits. I'd love to get your thoughts. Love to get your thoughts on past this season because again, honestly, I wasn't super duper impressed. So I don't know if I want to stick with it or not. It just didn't really grab me. Maybe I need to give it more episodes. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And if you'd like to see more of my reaction videos like this, because I'd like to try them. I'm not sure quite how they'll work, but I'd like to try them. So guys, again, thank you so much for watching. I super duper appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you guys again really, really soon. Bye.